Hello again, it's me, the guy with the channel on YouTube. I don't remember why so anyways, today I'm gonna do another review. It's been quite a while since my last review, mainly because it be because because so we're reviewing today the Bandai nineteen ninety six Mother Legion. Of course, this is my first camera figure review, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So Unlike the Ultra Monsters, we'll go straight to detail, and this figure was originally released in 1996, and the detail is really nice. Uh, yeah, it's really... Sorry, it's been a while since the last review, so not completely in the game here. Here we go, we're focused. Sorry if this isn't showing up very well. I don't really know why. I mean, I record the videos, and they look good on camera, and then when I upload them on YouTube, the quality is horrible. But, if you can see, the detail is really nice. We have all sorts of hairs sculpted in there. The brown spray on the legs is kind of eh. But, then again, 1996. She has a weird cod piece thing. I don't know why. It is a she, so why she would need that. I don't know. You can see in there, there's some really nice detail. It looks like elephant hide or rhino hide or something. Her weird quadrillion space titty things that shoot little legions out of. I don't really know what those are, but they're painted nicely. Which is good. It's very crisp for, you know, figure from 1998. Face. Her little mouth in there. I'm not really sure if that's focusing or not, but it's open, which is kind of odd, because her mandibles are in the closed position, but, eh, you know. And there is some really nice sculpted detail in there, as well. Face for a little horn thingamajig, looks nice. Her little arm things, I don't really know what these are. This review is going very slow. They do stand out a little bit, and also, one major inaccuracy with this figure is she's gray with yellow highlights. In the movie, she was more of a bone white with a kind of dark gray, almost black wash, so this is very inaccurate paint job-wise. You can see more elephant rhino hide looking skin there. See all sorts of nice detail in there, the legs are nicely done very squishy vinyl right there I don't know why I'm talking about that but yeah I'm not doing this review very well but you can see there's all sorts of detail there and then coming to this little weird wasp thing another minor gripe I have is that this spot right here has no detail on it it's just smooth and when she's on a flat surface it does kind of show a little, so it's a little... Eh. And for articulation, the head can move. It can move 360 because it is very soft vinyl. This was when Bandai, you know, Bandai was still making the transition into soft vinyl, so they didn't know how soft to make it, so it's a very soft vinyl figure, and you can't force it 360. But... You don't want to do that, it wears away the vinyl, and that can physically damage the figure. And the head, you know, it just moves a little bit side to side, kind of pointless, really. There is a joint in her waist, right here, and it can't actually move, it's just a separate piece, it's not glue sealed. There are no glue seals on this figure, which we'll get to why in a second. And the arms move up and down a little bit can force them past but that wears away the vinyl and one thing that's kind of cool is these can move there's no real reason why but what is kind of cool is you can actually move them to the side like that and then move the arms past and move them back into place and there you go you can move the arm without wearing away the vinyl so whether or not that was intentional I don't really know they probably could have done glue seals but I think it was really that this figure would be would have been way too soft to have glue seals and it would have just tore away the vinyl 
And right here, again, is a separate piece. It is not glue sealed in and is not meant to move. So don't try to move it. And then finally, the legs back here both move. And right here moves. And you know, you could try to do that leaning up pose she does, but she's just way too soft vinyl and she collapses under her own weight. So you can't actually do the pose that she does in the movie when she leans up. So there's a lot of articulation, but most of it's really kind of useless. And now, on to sizing. Here's the SH Monster Arts Gamera 1996. Oh boy, this is going to be a little awkward here. So you got everything in frame. Just focus. There we go. At first, someone would say this is very inaccurate, but actually, this is a scene in the movie where they're right up to each other and Legion just impales them in the shoulder and... They were about this height when they were up close to each other, so it is an inaccurate sizing, but only by about an inch with this figure, so she's only an inch out of scale, at least with 6-inch figures, and I believe the X-Plus Legion is only an inch bigger than this figure, so that would size up a lot better. Anyways, next, here is Revoltech Gamera 1996. This is a lot more inaccurate. And Gamera looks way too small, but they still look good to display together. And that's how I, that's the Gamera I ever displayed next to. And next, here is a Flying Legion soldier that came with Revoltec Gamera. Well, I mean, it's just a little, it's a little out of scale. Why I brought this in, I don't really know. And next, here's an E. Teeny tiny little legion soldier, smaller than a grain of rice, that came with the Revolt at Gamera as well. Could be a little smaller. Anyways, I'll just put that to the side and hope not to lose it. Next, here is the pod spore that came with the Revolt at Gamera. And this is an inaccurate sizing, but then again, it's just a spore. Next, here is the Bandai Gamera 1995. Horribly inaccurate sizing. I don't have the Bandai Gamera 1996, unfortunately. So, yeah. Next, just for shits and giggles, here's Bandai Super Gauss. Again, way too inaccurate. I don't know the exact sizing for Legion, but very inaccurate, probably. Next, here is the Bandai 8-inch GMK Godzilla, because, you know, you know, Shisuke Kaneko, Shisuke Kaneko, you see what I did there? Yeah, they are not in scale, I just thought I'd bring that in, because it is the Godzilla from the same director. Next, here... Here's just the usual figures you'd see in one of these reviews. Here's the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1995 Rebirth version, which is very inaccurate and doesn't look very good. And you would want Legion to be um, maybe about there. So, yeah, but that's just to give you an idea of how big she is. And next, here is, of course, who's been in every review except one, repainted Bandai Creation Final Wars Rodan again. Probably very inaccurate, but, you know, you can fight with them or something, I don't know. They're your figures, you do what you want with them. Next, here is the Bandai, no, not Bandai, NECA Godzilla 2014. I always seem to screw this guy up in his introduction. And, again, this is just to give you an idea of how big the figure is. Because this figure is way out of scale with her. It should be like that big or something, I don't know. I don't know the exact height for Legion. And finally, here is the Ultra Hero Series 2009 Ultraman Powered. Again, just to give you an idea of how big she is, she is way too out of scale. It's like 55 meters, and this is over 100 meters, so very inaccurate. 
And then finally, onto the history of the figure and the pricing. This figure was released once and only once by Bandai in 1996 alongside the Bandai 8 inch Gamera, no, Bandai Gamera 1996 and the theater exclusive Gamera 1996 to coincide with the release of Gamera 2 Advent of Legion. And that was the only time the figure was released. The price, it was its original price, I don't really know. I would assume same price as Gamera in 1996, and I don't really know the price of that. And that was the only ever time this figure was released. In terms of pricing nowadays, if you find her on like eBay, she's usually, I've seen range from around 60 to to $100, depending on if she has the tag or not. I got mine for 30 $34, so pretty good deal, although she is very scuffed, as you can see, and, uh, yeah, I got, she generally is very expensive, and, you know, like I said, 60 to 100 bucks, so, good luck trying to find one, because I have seen that they're slowly starting to diminish, not in price, but in numbers and quantity that you find them on eBay. Last I checked, which was literally just before I started this review, there were only two on eBay. So if you're trying to find one of these, I would suggest getting one soon because it might be a while till you can find one again. So for rating, I'm going to give this figure a, an 8 out of 10. Or nah, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. It's a good figure. Uh, good detail, and if you can find her, pick her up. Oh, also, uh, the X Plus Legion, which the X Plus did a Legion, which was only an inch bigger than that, but I plan on getting that, so you know, I don't know why I brought that up. So, yeah, again, this figure, Bandai Mother Legion, gets a 9 out of 10. It's a pretty good figure. If you can find her for whatever price you're hoping to find her for, I would suggest getting her. And that's about it. Sorry if this review is dragged on. It's been a while since I did the last review, and this was just kind of an on-the-spot decision. So that's it for this review, and I'll see you in the next one. If you want to, you can subscribe. And bye.